Well, did you guys like the bookcase? The painted bookcase <laughs> that I wasn't intending on painting? Um, yeah, well, I actually am pretty happy with the way it all turned out, but I, I wanted to address a few questions and concerns and uh, some of the lessons that I learned from it. First of all, I, I violated one of my own rules about buying wood, which actually kind of led to that series of events that led up to me painting this project. And that rule is never buy wood without something in mind for it. And I bought that sheet of plywood a few weeks ago because the only thing I had in mind was I wanted to make a single sheet of plywood project. I didn't even really know what the project was going to be. I thought maybe a bookcase, but I hadn't designed anything. And so my only thought was it would be something that would fit into my office area where Wyatt keeps his school books and stuff, just a little organizing center. Well, as I eventually des started designing the project and I figured, wow, this really looks good as kind of a retro style that would fit nicely in my living room. Now, if I had known that initially, I would have bought cherry plywood that would have matched all of the other pieces that I've been building for my living room, the credenza and the coffee table, and it would have all kind of gone together. But instead I had that sheet of pine plywood, which is such a light color, which is fine and normally, if I just put a clear coat over it, it would look great. It just wouldn't look great in my living room. So that's why I decided, well, maybe I'll try to stain it. Something I, I rarely do. And the reason I don't usually stain projects is because I think stain almost always looks fake. The only stain I have found that looks good is the Minwax Golden Oak stain. Golden Oak looks really nice, especially on oak, it, it really gives it a nice warm look. I love Minwax products. I think everything that I've used of theirs works as intended with the exception of this one product, the poly shades. Maybe it works for some people. I mean, it must, they still sell them. They've been selling this stuff for years. So I don't know what exactly I was doing wrong. What I can tell you is that I followed their instructions to the letter. I put on their own Minwax uh, pre-stain conditioner over the wood and I wiped it dry. I started to apply the poly shades within the two hour window that they tell you to do it on. And I even bought one of their own brushes that they recommend specifically for their polyurethane products and the poly shades. And a couple of people asked me why I uh, didn't run any tests on it. Well, I did run tests and this is actually my test. And I guess the, the problem with running tests is that you never really know what it's gonna look like until you put it on an entire piece. It's kind of like when you buy a, a swatch of carpet or something and or a paint sample and you're supposed to tell by that little bit what it's gonna look like on the whole. So anyways, yeah, I did test it out. I'm not gonna test it out on a full sheet of plywood and it looked, it looked pretty decent. So I thought, yeah, hey, okay, this is gonna work out fine. Should be no problem. Bam, I'll just put it on there like that. <laughs> The first problem I noticed when I started to apply it was on the edge banding. This is birch edge banding, which is real wood, and it just wouldn't stick. It was just like putting it on glass or something. It would just kind of roll off of there. And then as I was putting it on the rest of the plywood, it was, uh, it was almost like oil and water. It was like it just wouldn't stick. It wouldn't apply. It would just kind of roll over it, and then when it would, it would just leave these long streaks. And I thought, well, maybe that's just the first coat because also according to their instructions is you have to put on two coats. So I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot on the second coat. And so I let it dry the minimum eight hours. I actually let it dry overnight so that I could uh, make sure that it was fully dried. And then they recommend before putting on the second coat, you need to uh, buff it out with some steel wool. I did that on one box and then I used 320 sandpaper on another box to see which one might work because the steel wool was actually just kind of creating a mess. So I did that, applied the second coat and it was just as bad. In fact, this time I wasn't just getting the streaks, I was getting the just the weird pooling up of stain that was just horribly ugly. A couple of people had told me, well, you have to put on a lot of coats of that stuff for it to look good. And if I wanted to put on a lot of coats on that, that would take me days of waiting, drying, sanding it all down. So I don't know, maybe people do have good luck with that product. It was just my experience. I, I did not have good luck with it. But I did get some messages from people. Tim actually gave me some suggestions. He said he's had some pretty good luck with it is by wiping the coat, after you put the first coat on, and just wiping it off like you would a regular stain. 
Um, that kind of sort of makes sense to me because uh, for the stain part, and then the next coats would be more for the polyurethane part, I guess, which you, you wouldn't want to wipe off. Um, so I don't know, that's something you might want to try if, if you're going to use that product. I don't know if you want to use that product after hearing, hearing all of this. Uh, he also said you can add a little bit of solvent to it and it makes it go on easier. I guess you would just add some mineral spirits. And he recommended not using, or he said he hasn't tried using sealers on it. He's just put it on bare wood, which is also, all this stuff is contradictory to what Minwax puts on the label of the can. So I don't know. I just don't, I'm not going to mess with it again. It's, it's not worth it. It doesn't save you any time at all because when you stain, normally just one application of stain is enough. I mean, rarely do I need to make it any darker. So I just wipe on one coat of stain with, with a rag, wipe it off, and you're done. Then you can apply the, the top coat. A couple of people asked me how the paint stuck <laughs> over top of that polyurethane. And I can tell you it worked out really great because what I did is I went to my local Ace Hardware store who have people who really know what they're talking about and they, uh, I should have asked them about the poly shades, but they uh, recommended this Z Prime and it's put out by Rust-Oleum and it's a uh, super, it even says super fast drying oil based primer and it, one of its, well its main selling point is that it sticks to almost anything and it does and I, so I just put on a one coat of that stuff right over the dried poly shades and then I was able to use regular latex house paint which I had mixed to that color and apply it directly over that and it looked beautiful. But of course if I knew I was going to paint this project to begin with I wouldn't have even used plywood. I would have used MDF probably because it would have been cheaper. You could use plywood if you wanted to, but I certainly, I didn't need to do the edge banding because you could paint right over the edge of the plywood. And I wouldn't have used the dowel joinery also because I could have just uh, screwed all the pieces together in some way and then filled up any holes or even, even nailed it together. So it was just, uh, mostly it was a bunch of mistakes on my part. I can't put this all on, I can't blame it on, on poly shades really because I, I just went about this the whole way wrong. I should have had a, a, an exact plan in, in mind before I began and I guess the lesson here is think about the finishing of the project, how you're going to finish it before you even buy the wood. But about the project itself, I'm actually really proud of that design and I think that uh, my solution for the doweling jig works out great. Uh, if you're going to build that project, you should be able to follow those plans and my cutting list and have no trouble at all with it. can't imagine anybody sitting through this entire video, <laughs> but if you did and you're curious, I, I have seven tomato plants planted this year. Uh, I got two of them that are the same because they're called black cherry tomatoes. So I'm hoping those will do well. I got some of this uh, drip line that I've kind of wrapped around all of them. And that seems like a pretty good way to water them. Although when it gets toward the end of the line, not a lot of water comes out. So I think I'm gonna have to split that into two branches. And yeah, check it out. Check out the artichoke. Remember this thing last year? I was afraid I was afraid it was going to die because it was just doing nothing. Well now it's just, I think it's going to take over my entire vegetable garden. <laughs> anyway, let's see you guys later.